Hello, everyone. Welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so glad to have you with us today. Today is Recreation and Leisure. Make the most of your summer. I'm ready to make the most of my summer. It's just around the corner. I wonder if you are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to APH Virtual Excel Academy. Hi, Donnie. Glad to have you with us today. This is our very last session for this school year of the Academy. During the summer, we've got camp, though, so hopefully you are registering. Welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today is recreation and leisure. Make the most of your summer. And our instructor today is Laura Lee. Hi, Laura Lee. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. I'm going to turn them over to you. Great. Thank you everyone for joining today. I'm very excited about our topic this afternoon. We're going to be talking about recreation and leisure, but also making the most of our summer. And I know that I'm very excited about summer coming up and I'm sure you are as well. So I am going to share my screen with you here. And in our topic today, we will be talking about some things that are fun for us to do in the summer and how you can make the most of your summer that's coming up in the very soon couple of weeks. Okay. So my first slide here is introducing my topic. As was shared, today is recreation and leisure and we're going to be talking about making the most of our summer. I'm Larley Whitney, and my slide today has a line drawing of a sun, and the sun has a smiley face in the middle. This slide is ready for summer too. I am sharing with you today from Utah, and I work at Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind, and I'm sure wherever any of you guys are, you're starting to feel it warm up. It's getting hot outside and the summer is coming. And we are ready to talk about our lesson. So the audience today that I have made this slide for is students who have disabilities who are in the grade seventh grade or higher to post high and their family members or the professionals who work with them and anyone else who's in that range who's interested to learn more about these recreation and leisure activities. Where are they? We're gonna talk about that today. So some of you might have seen my first two webinars that were also about recreation and leisure. The first one talked about looking past the IEP, and the second one is about finding your hobby. So if you watch those, you might be in our audience today as well, but everybody is free to join. If those don't match you, that's okay. You can stay with us. Okay, so we will be talking about how to make the most of your summer. After our time together today, I hope that you will feel confident about picking a summer goal for yourself. It should be something that you're interested in, something that you might want to learn more about, or it could be something that you have not been able to do alone on your own before, but it's something that you'd like to be independent in. Then we will cover how to track those goals. What is the best way to know if you've accomplished that goal you picked? So our objectives read, students will learn how to pick an activity that interests you or um, something that you'd like to practice during the summer. And students will learn how to use the appropriate tracking method for the goal that you choose in order to know when that goal has been accomplished. So in our webinar today, I'm going to challenge each one of you to pick a summer goal 
So be listening while we talk and be thinking about something that you would like to do for this summer. Something that you've maybe wanted to do before or haven't had enough time to do or something that you want to learn to share with your friends and family. I don't know why my, there we go. My slide wasn't working there for a moment. So what does recreation and leisure mean? Hmm. Some of you might have heard these words being used on your IEPs. And sometimes you will see these words together or you can see them used in place of each other or you can see them all or you can see just one. But recreation and leisure, and sometimes even the word hobby, have all very similar meanings. Recreation is an activity done for enjoyment when one is not working. Leisure is the use of your free time for enjoyment. And hobby is an activity done regularly in your free time. Okay. So we've heard free time. It's good to know that this is time away from work. These are activities that you might see that cooking is something that you can do for fun, but cooking can also be work sometimes. We're gonna focus on the fun part. This would be time in your schedule that is specifically scheduled to have fun. The activities would include things that make you happy or things that you like to do either for a long period of time or a short period of time. Something that you don't get bored doing day after day. And sometimes people will ask, what is your hobby? Or what do you do for fun? What they're really asking is what these recreation and leisure skills are. Which ones do you like to do? So if someone asks your hobby, you can say any of the activities you talked about today. So I want to share some reasons with you on why recreation and leisure activities are beneficial for you. And I see some comments in this chat here from Donnie that says, go to summer 12 day summer camp. That is a really great recreation and leisure activity and a great way to spend your summer. You've got 12 days where you're busy and you're in outside enjoying the weather. That's a great comment. Thank you, Donnie. And Leanne says, Zach says band camp. That's another great one. Thank you, Zach. And Laura Lee, we have Isabel who has her hand raised. And so yeah. Isabel, you know how to unmute your mic. You have the ability to talk. So what I want to do is some, this summer is to decorate my new room at our new house. That is a really, really good one, Isabel. I have some questions I'm going to ask you guys later. And one thing I want to do is decorate my hallway. So yeah. we're on the same lines. That is a great one. I'm going to show you how you can put that to practice and make sure that it is a focus for your summer. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's talk about why these leisure and recreations are good for you. It is good for all of us to participate in recreation and leisure because it can give you a feeling of self-confidence. It is something that can make you feel good about yourself. And when we feel good about ourselves, we have more happiness and a sense of well-being. You feel good about where you are and what you're doing. If you've chosen a goal that is something that you want to be able to do by yourself, that's a great way to increase your independence. When we can do things for our on our own, we get that feeling of independence. Like, yeah, we did something. We can be proud of ourselves. It gives you a sense of satisfaction, which is very close to happiness or 
well being, but when we have that sense of satisfaction, we have something that maybe wasn't finished before, like our bedroom that hasn't been decorated yet. But then when you have it done, you feel good. You worked hard. You did something hard. And then now it looks great. If you pick up physical activities, it can be really good to help you increase your muscle strength or your flexibility and your balance. Something that I'm not very good at with my physical is coordination. So that's something that I could use a good goal on. Help me with my coordination. Sometimes my body doesn't move the way that I think it's going to. I need to do more activities like that. Like I said, if you pick one where you practice it alone, you can find independence in something that maybe you didn't know you could do before. Or you are learning something new that before seemed scary or you weren't so sure about. And it can be a great way to keep our minds active and learning. And that's really important when we have time away from school. When we have lots of time in the summer, like all of us will hear pretty soon, we wanna keep our minds active and learning and growing. And these are the things that can help us with that. And lastly, I would just want to say, don't be afraid to try new things. Sometimes when we try new things, we learn that we were good at something we didn't know we were before. Or it can be something that we're scared of. But then when we try it and we learn it, we learn that there's not much to be scared of anymore. In our chat, we have Donnie who says about buying ice cream off the ice cream truck all by yourself. That is a really great one. Sometimes Donnie, I get so nervous when I get up there, I want all the ice cream. So I have to decide before which one I'm gonna get and how much money I have, because I might want more than one. So you'll need to know how to do that on, by yourself. That's great. I can't wait to see ice cream trucks. I'm ready for ice cream. Okay, so to understand more about recreation and leisure activities, we're gonna talk a little bit about the different types that you can fall into. So we have different types of recreational and leisure activities. Typically, they are broken into two general categories called active and passive. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But I've further broken them down into needs categories. These will help you to know which types of activities would be interesting to you. So for physical, these will be the activities that use large body movements or more than two muscle groups. So you've got your arms working and you've got your legs working. You might be standing up and sitting down. Those are the big active physical ones like sports or hiking. Then we have mental. And these are the activities that will use more of your thinking brain and how you process information. So activities like reading, I really enjoy reading and writing, but that uses a lot of my mind. Or puzzles, you need to think about how the puzzle pieces fit together. And that can be a way that we keep our minds active. Creative activities are activities that will allow you to express yourself through art or music or imaginative play. What's really great about creative is that you can't go wrong. There is no rules. You make up the rules. You are the one who says that looks good or that doesn't look good. It can be a way that you can express yourself and maybe inside you're feeling something but you don't know how to say it, but you can paint it or you can draw it out on a piece of paper. That's a good one. The observer 
are activities that you enjoy either watching or being a part of, but maybe not the one who's actually doing the playing. So you like to watch sports or soccer and football, but you don't want to be the one who plays it. You enjoy feeling that energy around you in that environment. And that's how you participate. That's a really social activity that you can meet new people and you can be surrounded by lots of fun energy. So in our active categories, we have things, like I said, like sports, like bowling and skiing and golfing. And some of these will be things that you can do by yourself, like golfing or yoga and other things you'll want to have some people with you like sports. So baseball and basketball, those will be things that you work with other people. Creative is an active one too, because you're using your fine motor skills to draw and you're moving just not very much. Then we have our, oh, I skipped too far. Sorry guys. My computer is not as fast as my brain is thinking. Okay. Then we have our passive activities like reading and writing and board games. Those are the things that are fun for us, but you might not move around very much. You can sit in your seat and you can have it on a table in front of you. And that is your activity. Or observing, like we talked about the sports, but this can be movies and plays or listening to podcasts. That's one I like to do a lot. I see in our chat that Donnie also loves to read. That's a good one. I have a goal later that I might pick for my summer goal in reading. We'll talk about that in a bit. All right, my computer is not. Okay, now, some of you might be thinking, goals, I just finished school. I don't want a summer goal. I wanna take a break. This is the time to have fun. This is my time and I can sleep in. That is all true, but I wanna tell you why it is important to have a goal for yourself and why summer is the perfect time to make goals. In the summer, we have a lot of free time that we don't normally have during the school year. And some of you, there might be something that you've been wanting to do, but you just didn't have time with all your homework and your school activities, or you were trying to get through the school year and that's okay. But summer is a great time to use that free time for something good, something that can help us build good habits. We wanna make sure we don't fall into bad habits in the summer, like going to bed too late or waking up too late or not going outside and staying inside all the time. The weather is warm in the summer, which can allow for a lot of outdoor activities that you couldn't do before. And warm weather makes us feel good, like we wanna move, like we wanna be out there and summer is the perfect time to do that. Working on a goal during the summer can help us stay motivated for the rest of the year. It can help our minds work so that we don't get into a slump. And when school starts, we feel sluggish and slow. If we work through our summer, then we have something that we can talk about and share with our friends when we come back to school again. And you get a sense of pride. You've finished something. Maybe there's a book that you've been wanting to read that you haven't had time. If you put your free time or all of that extra time in the summer to reading the book, you can feel good and tell your friends 
that you read a good book and maybe share it with them to read too. Donnie has a great question in the chat, and he, in, or the chat. he says, what is a slump? So a slump is kind of a time when you have a lot of free time that you don't really put to use. You don't really work at something or you kind of just go through your day and there's nothing that you're excited about or looking forward to. But with summer goals, we have something exciting to look forward to. And why is it good for you to have goals for you? Goals can help us give us focus. It can help measure our progress. When we have goals that we're working on during the summer, we can achieve all of that stuff that we just didn't get to. We beat procrastination. So you don't put off your goal. You stay focused. And you can maybe find out that Maybe you picked a goal for the summer and you worked at it and you practiced, but it just wasn't something that brought you joy. That's okay. Now you know that that might not be what you want to do as a hobby. You might not want to pick that for something that you continue to do. What's fun about recreation and leisure skills and goals is it can help us find things that we want to do. Like, if we really, really, really enjoy something, maybe later we can turn it into a job. That sounds really cool. I'm just checking the chat. All right, I'm gonna challenge you all to make a goal. So don't feel like you're alone in this. I'm gonna be making a goal for me too. So we're all gonna have a goal that we choose for ourselves. And it can be a physical goal, it can be a mental goal, it can be a, a creative goal or an observer. Whatever it is, I just want you to make sure that it's something that you're interested in, something that you maybe have always wanted to do or something that you just thought of right now, that's okay. Um, as we're talking today, we're going to continue and talk about some examples. If there's something that comes up that makes you think, what is that? I'd like to know more about that. That might be a good goal for you to pick. So be thinking about this as we continue to talk, because I am going to have you help me pick a goal as well. Donnie says he is not going to miss any of the APH webinars. That's great. Donnie, this one is the last one for this year, but there are APH summer camps that I think you all should look into and take advantage of. There will be different categories and groups, and you can sign up for the one that fits you, and then they'll send you some free backpacks and things that go along with it. Donnie's you are elite. This is Robin. Sorry to jump right in, but I see that Isabel's got her hand back up. So Isabel, you know how to unmute. So you can go ahead and give a question or a comment to Laura Lee. Um, will you guys be doing more of these recreation and leisure sessions this fall? You know what, Isabel? I have lots of ideas. And I think that I would be very interested to do more. Would you like to see more? Yes. Wonderful. I think I'll do one where I talk about turning your hobbies into a job. That'll be awesome. Wouldn't that be great to have something that you love to do as a job? Yes. Raise hand button. I love that too. Thank you for your question. You're welcome. Okay. So there will be some things that you need to consider when you're picking a summer goal. This is something that you'll be spending a lot of time doing and a lot of practice. So you'll want to be sure that it's a reasonable goal. 
if it's something that you have a set schedule in the morning, a set schedule is a schedule that doesn't change and it is the same every single day. Don't pick a goal that can only be done in the morning. So if you have something in the morning where you have to go and do every day, maybe don't pick a hike first thing in the morning as your goal. We'll wanna make sure that it's something that you can accomplish. So we're gonna talk about taking ownership of your goals. And in one way you can do that is speaking your voice and feeling good about your goals. So this will be knowing your preferences. You'll want to know what you like and what you don't like. Maybe it can be something that you're already good at. But like I said, if it's not, don't worry. Trying new things can be a lot of fun. I always really like to try new things and find out, oh, I'm good at that. I never would have tried that before. Something that I found that I'm good at is roller skating. I'm not very good at skating on four wheels when they're next to each other, but when they're all in a row like rollerblades are, I can do it. I don't know why, but that's not something I would have tried if I was too scared. So be sure you try things that you are not so sure with, or it can be something that you have seen other friends doing or some of your siblings and you think, I'm gonna try that. I think that that's something that I would like to do and something I'd be good at. You'll want to be know your needs for the second part of taking ownership of your goals. So what are your needs? Let's talk about that. You'll want to make sure that you have thought about your mobility. If you are someone who uses a wheelchair to get around or a white cane, you'll want to be sure that you know where it is that you're going to. If you choose a goal that has a field, you'll want to be sure that your wheelchair can get there or that you can manage the terrain with your white cane. If you have vision needs, like I do, I'll want to be sure that I pick an activity where I can still wear my glasses. Because if I don't have my glasses with me, I might not be very productive at anything. You'll want to be sure that if you have hearing needs, that you can use your hearing aids. Or if it's something that you would like to try in water, maybe what it would look like if you didn't have your hearing aids in. Those are things you'll need to know. Communication is something that you'll need to know as well. It's important. If I'm someone who uses sign language or a voice output device, I'll wanna make sure that who I'm communicating with and who's gonna be there can understand me. I'll want to be sure that if I'm gonna be working in a big group, that there's at least one person that I can ask questions to so that you can stay in the know. The next one is social expectations and rules. This will include things like, um, if you choose to play, play soccer, in soccer, you're not allowed to touch the ball with your hands, but you are if you're the goalie. So if you wanna be the goalie, then you have different rules than the rest of the players do. Oops, it skipped it. This is an example of some of the communication needs. My computer might not go back. Okay. The last one is to be informed about what is available to you in your area. So I know I live in Utah, but not everyone else does who lives, who's on our webinar today. So you'll want to be thinking about what is close to you. If you are wanting to learn how to swim, but you don't have a swimming pool or an ocean close, that might be a harder goal for you to work on for the summer. 
If it's something that's far away, you might need to work transportation and knowing where it is and how you're gonna get there, if you have a ride, or if you'll be using public transportation, you'll need to know the stops to get on and to get off and how much time it's gonna take you to get there. We don't wanna spend too much time traveling to get there if it's an activity that we're not gonna spend much time doing and practicing. So knowing what is in your area, how are you gonna find out about that? Sorry guys, my computer's a little slow. The first place to check for knowing what's available is going to your school. And my slide has a picture of some kids in front of a soccer goalie and their shirts have, has the word goals on it with the soccer ball for the O, which was a good picture I thought because we're working on summer goals. So some of you might already be out of school. Some of you can still go visit the office. There are some programs that your schools will provide that do happen in the summer. But if they don't, you can also talk to the office and they might have flyers or banners for other activities that are happening. Or you can visit their website. They might have some information there. You can talk to your family and friends and teachers to help you find what activities are happening. There might be choir or pottery where you make things with clay. There could be art and swimming or other clubs or groups. Some sports teams will practice over the summer. And photography is something that they might have that you can kind of do on your own. So you'll want to check your school, but you also have great community resources. So we mentioned a little bit about our APH summer camps, but there's also some boys and girls clubs that you can look at. There's outdoor adventures like state recreation programs or national and state parks. A lot of times they'll have activities or groups that you can join for hiking or fishing or kayaking. Kayaking is when you're in those little boats by yourself and you're rowing. Some fun ideas too are Home Depot, Michaels and Joann's. All will have activities or crafts or little things that you can make and they will have a class that will provide you with all the materials and they'll show you how to do it. Or Joanne's has a YouTube channel that you can visit and it will show you how you can make tote bags or birdhouses or you can make rope, pottery, really neat. Those are some ideas for community resources. All right, so now that we have some ideas on what you might like to do and how you are going to find information, it's good to make sure that you make your goal known. Share it with your friends, share it with your family. When you share your goal with others, they have a greater chance to ask you about your goal, to see if you have learned something new or if you need help, that's a good way. You can take some, rip some pictures out of a magazine that represent your goal. So if I would like to learn how to paint a wall, I can rip pictures out of a magazine of different colors of paint. 
and you can kind of create a little vision board, something that you're gonna look at and see, something that will keep you motivated. I always like to use my bathroom mirror and I will write down a little message or if you're someone who uses braille, you can braille your goal and post it somewhere that you will be reminded often. For me, the bathroom mirror is a place that I go to every morning when I brush my teeth or I'm getting ready for the day. And that reminds me to be thinking about how I'm going to practice my goal for that day. And when we think about it a lot, it's always in our minds and we remember and we dedicate a lot more time to it when we're thinking about it more often. Okay, so another important thing to know is when you will need to have your goal done by. This just means when is summer over? I know we don't wanna think about summer being over before it's even begun, but that's how long we know we have to work on our goals. So for me, my last day is August 15th. I know by August 15th that I need to have my goal finished or close so that I can meet my goal. Some of you might hear your teacher saying um, setting a baseline, but what that means is just knowing where you're starting from. If I wanted to read a book and I was already on chapter two, I don't need to go back and read chapter one again. I've already got some knowledge. Or let's say you love macaroni and cheese, and I do too. And you want to pick a goal to learn how to make macaroni and cheese all by yourself. Well, if you already know how to fill up the pot with water, and you already know how long to cook the noodles for, you don't need to start at that process. You might wanna start from draining the noodles and then adding the butter and how much butter to use and how much milk and how long you stir it for. So that's knowing where to start. Donnie says, I am not allowed to use the stove in the chat. Thank you, Donnie. That is another need that you need to be aware of. So if you're not allowed to use the stove, there might be some other things that you can cook using the microwave or knowing how to put together your favorite peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That is a great comment because Donnie knew what his needs were. He knew he couldn't use the stove. So macaroni and cheese might not be the best one. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so I have some ideas here for you on how to keep track of your goals. Some of you might know a little bit about how you track your goals during the school year, but these are very, very simple ways. These ones are not gonna be very hard for us to put into practice. The first one that you can do is a photo journal or a literary journal. So a photo journal means that you would take a picture of your bedroom before you've decorated it. So you have a picture of your walls that are blank, you don't have your bed set up, you don't have your posters on the wall, and as you put more things in, you can take a picture in the middle. And when you're all finished, you take a picture at the end. So you have kind of like a journal or pictures that show where you started and your process in the middle and then the end product. Those are really fun. Sometimes people will call them before and after pictures. Or if you're someone who likes to write things down, you can use a literary journal. And so you write where you started, what your goal is, or you can braille it and you can talk about what you've learned, what you like, what you don't like, maybe some ideas that you have that you want to implement. 
that is one way that you can keep track of your goals. Another one that's really easy is sharing that new information that you've learned with someone. So I think I would like to learn more about the ocean. I've always found the ocean very interesting. And so I might find some documentaries or some books on the ocean. And when I learn that information, I can share that with my friends and my family. And it might not be something that they knew before. I might teach them something. You could learn something and teach other people what you've learned. The next one we have is breaking it down into smaller steps. This is a good one if you have a really, really, really big book you want to finish, you're not going to finish it in a day. And that would be too hard. So you're going to break it down into just reading a chapter a day. And when you break it down, you can stretch it out over time. And then it makes that goal feel a lot more accomplishable. It's easier to think about what it's gonna look like at the end. If you have a big task that is just too much, you might get discouraged and we don't wanna get discouraged. And in ch our chat, Donnie says, put a bookmark in it, exactly. We are gonna break that book into smaller pieces and use that bookmark to track or mark where we are. The next one we have are calendar markoffs or tally marks. So at the bottom of my screen, if you can see, I have a series of lines, straight lines um, that go from top to bottom. They are vertical. The first one we have here is just one tally mark. So that means that I've done something one time. Calendar markoffs and tallies are good if you want to put a daily practice in. If I want to wake up every morning and do yoga, then I'm going to use some tally marks or maybe a calendar to show how many times I've used it. So the first time you do it, you put one, and then you're going to build. We have two, and then three lines, and then four lines that are all next to each other. And this is where it gets a little bit more difficult is you put a line across all four of them. And that's five. So when you go back, if counting by fives is a skill that you have, you can count all these tally marks and know that you have done five, 10, or 15 days of yoga. That's a good goal. I might need to make that my goal. The last one is that probably one of the easiest is you just show off your skill. So this would be something like if you wanted to make a basket. I'm not very good at basketball. And if I practiced and practiced and practiced to make the basket on the first try, demonstrating my skill would be showing my friends that I did it. Okay. Just a moment here, guys. My screen. I skipped a slide that I wanted to share with you. So I am going to go back to see if I can find where that went because I want you guys to help me pick a goal. I told you I'm gonna be doing this with you. So we are going to talk about some ideas on what goals I could pick. And then I want you guys to use your chat box to vote. Okay, so we're gonna take a little break. Move around in your seat if you need to. Get your fingers up, wiggle those fingers. If you haven't already done so, open your chat because we are going to pick a summer goal for me.
Laura Lee. So one of the goals that I think I'd like to try is to read a chapter of a day of this book that's called House of Leaves. And this book is really big. This book is 670 pages. So I couldn't read this all in one day. This is when I'm gonna have to break up into tiny steps. And for tracking this goal, I am going to use a daily calendar checkoff or a tally so that I know how many I've done. Another easy, good way to know if I've met my goal is if I have my book finished by the time summer is over. So if you think I should pick reading a chapter a day, I want you to put A in the checkbox, or I'm sorry, the chat box. I see some coming in, thank you. We're gonna tally all the votes up at the end. The next one is how to learn to rollerblade backwards. So I said before that I'm pretty good at rollerblading, not so much skating. But ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to learn how to rollerblade or skate backwards. So this is going to be a goal where I'm going to track by demonstrating the skill. So I am going to show off to my friends and maybe some of my neighbors that I can now skate backwards. And if you think that one, put B in the chat box. This is one that is very similar to Isabel's goal. I wanna redo my decor or the decoration in my hallway. It's just white and bare. There's nothing on the walls, kind of a sad hallway. I want to take before and after pictures to show you that I have accomplished this goal. So if you like that one, put C in the chat box. The last one that I have is learning how to meditate. I've always thought it would be a good thing to meditate, but I have such a hard time silencing my mind. So I'm going to watch a how to eight series episode documentary on how to meditate. And I'm going to share that with my family. So if you like that one, go ahead and put D in the chat box. I have in the chat box that Jennifer thinks that reading a book sounds the most relaxing and great for imagination. I agree. It's been kind of a busy, crazy year. I might want to relax. We also have Jennifer thinks that I should read a book. So we've got two for book. And Monica says listening to books is really fun. I also enjoy listening to books and podcasts. And sorry to, okay. Now I'm gonna give you a few examples and let a few more people come in to vote. Looks like right now A is in the, way, the lead, but don't worry if you still wanna get yours in, you have a few more minutes. If you would like to pick a goal of creating a piece of art, a great way to do this would be a photo journal. You could take a picture of the blank canvas or something that might be fun is to take a canvas that you don't like and painting over it. So you can have a picture of what it looked like before and then a picture of it afterwards. And my slide shows a canvas with a splash of red and yellow paint that leads to the left and a splash of blue and purple and black paint that leads to the right. This is another goal that we have for cooking. And if you wanted to make the macaroni and cheese or cooking a meal, breaking it down into those smaller steps. So I have a picture of a bowl of macaroni with a basil leaf and some peppercorns in the back. And this is an example of how you could break down your goal. You put your action steps at the bottom and it says, did you complete your goal? Yes or no? 
And at the top, you write out what your goal is. This is an example if you wanted to shoot a basket from the three point line, which would be really hard for me. I don't know if I could do that one. And the way you would demonstrate your success is by showing off your skills. I think it's gonna skip a few slides because it's acting slow again. We have a few more minutes. Here is an example of an empty calendar that you can use to mark off those dates. You can write it in the month, so you can use it for any month. Um, June, July, or August, and you can cross off each day that you worked on a daily goal. So if you want to do yoga every day, you could use this calendar. If learning something new is what you'd like to do, we have a picture of uh, the world. Um, I know there's lots of fun planet Earth movies and documentaries that are very informational. Maybe you wanna learn about another country and share it with your family. Okay, so I think my summer goal is A, reading this book. Thank you so much, you guys. I've been wanting to get to this book for a long time. And it's got lots of interesting pages and pictures. And some of the pages don't even have words. It's a completely blank page. So it might be a little bit easier than I thought. And I just want to say thank you so much for everyone joining me today. And I am excited about starting on my summer goal. And I wish you all the best luck on your summer goals. And when we come back in the fall, it will be fun for you to chat with your friends and your family about what you did this summer because you are going to make the most of your summer. And this is going to be a fun way to stay active. Thank you so much sure. for sharing with us about recreation and leisure and encourage. There's so many things to be encouraged of. You helped us to think about things that we like to do and that we're good at and to pursue it. Yeah. And um, now I am good at, and I enjoy sleeping, but I'm <laughs> figuring that I need to be encouraged to be a bit more active. And so with that made me think about, okay, I can make myself some manageable goals to prog to then, you know, kind of walk through and track by just even walking my dog every day. And you gave me the idea, if I put it on the calendar, I will want to see that visual, that progress. So you have done that for me. I wish you the best of luck reading a book. I think that reading a book is a great choice after having just a stressful year. You know, yeah. whether you're a student or a teacher, it's just been a lot and you deserve rest. And to everybody out there, so we have, um, it says on here that you have a couple more webinars. Is this, do you we have do some not. more things? Hey, Amy, this is Robin. Okay. Are, this is our last webinar of Thanks. the school year. And I was thinking that and I wanted to make sure. So I'm so glad I asked because I don't want to fumble it, but I do want to share everybody that yes, the Excel camp summer camp is coming and it is going to be such great fun whether you want to learn about art there's a whole week about art there's a whole week about mystery uh, stem career um, space sensory even a whole week that's just dedicated to uh, things that are taught in spanish so if you speak spanish that is your thing to tap into and we hope that you will look into that. Please have, uh, you know, a parent guardian, whoever's with you can help you look into how you get registered and figure out what to do to be involved in our summer camp. 
And who knows what will happen after that? Maybe more recreation and leisure can come our way after the summer months. But first, we will keep our eyes on summer for summer camp. But thank you for today. It's been great. I hopped in for Leanne. She started it. I'm Amy, and I'm closing it up. And just happy to say thank you for being with us throughout our whole journey this past school year with Excel Academy. And do come back and see us for Excel Camp. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.